What made you fall in love with a little man like me? Mm. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> then you should turn in. All right. Early state conference. President Smith's coming. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah. Willard Bean, Brother Willard Bean, Brother Willard Bean, will you please come to the stand? Smith. Well, he needs to see us right now. He mentioned something about a mission. A mission? You've already been on three missions and we're just married. You're right. You be sure and mention all that to the prophet. It's so nice to see you again, Willie. And Sister Bean. It's wonderful to meet you. I was so pleased to hear of your marriage. Now, here is what I wanted to speak with you about. Eight years ago, the church purchased the Joseph Smith farm, and we're just now able to take possession of it. We need someone to live there and take care of the farm and reestablish the church in that area. And when you stepped through that door today, it was like a voice said to me, there's your man. So I'm extending a call to you and Rebecca to serve as missionaries and caretakers for the Joseph Smith farm. In New York? I discussed it with the 12, and we agreed that it would be far too expensive to move the farm here. When would you like us to leave? So you'll accept the call? Of course, President. Wonderful. And for how long will we serve? I think five years should do it. Now, this has been a hostile area for us. So your job will be to show them that we are good folks and we can fit into their lovely community, as well as helping us to secure other precious church history sites. Thank you for the trust, President. But it's been... 85 years since the church left there. All must be forgotten by now. Surely it can't be too bad. We heard you was coming. They heard we was coming. Brother and sister Bean, may God go with you.
Excuse me, kind sir. Can you direct me to the Joseph Smith farmhouse on Stafford Road? Seems nice. Yeah. You know, sweetheart, I may have to show these people a thing or two to get them to accept us. No, let's not start with that. Just saying, people respect a man who's willing to fight for what he believes in. Willard. Were any of Joseph and Emma's children born on a Smith farmhouse? I don't know, sweetheart. How do you ask? Oh, I just thought it'd be fun to know. I can find out. Do you think they have a good doctor here? I haven't been feeling too well. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what it is. It's all this travel. It happens to me, too. Trust me, this has never happened to you. I think I'll have this for another seven months or so. Talks and prophets walked. All right, dear, here you are. Thank you. I'll go get the uh, front door for you. Okay. You good? Uh huh. I'll be right back to help you. Sweetheart, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to tell you this morning how beautiful you are. <laughs> Look at it. We can do this. I hope so. We'll be just fine. We will be. I'll give it everything I have. All right. Just be patient with me while I'll try and make friends here. You will, dear. You're wonderful. All right. You ready? You can do this. I gotta take care of the rig. Wonderful, thank you. You know, with that seed money we were given, we should be able to get this farm back on its feet and running. Mm -hmm. We'll circle the calendar. 
We just got here and we already have our first visitors. Gentlemen, welcome. Come in. Happy to make your acquaintance, good neighbor. My name's Willard Bean. We know who you are. We'll say our peace, Mr. Bean, and be gone. As citizens of this community, we had a meeting this evening. It is the feeling of all who live here that you are to leave Palmyra. We drove you out of here years ago, and you're not coming back. So you best be on your way. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. See, we come out here hoping to fit in with you good people and be an asset to the community. You know, we hold no ill feelings for what your people did to us 80 years ago. And I was wrong. It always will be. So, you listen to me. We're here to stay even if we have to fight our way. Now, I could take you one at a time or three at once, whatever makes you happier. Well, come on! We'll be back. I'll be here. Been too bold, maybe. What? No. Honey, don't you feel the love just flowing out of me? Not really. I'm heading to town. Probably be the better part of a day into the night, so it's best you not wait up for me. Into the night? Sweetheart. You needn't worry. We're being protected. Love you. Love you. Good day, gentlemen. I am in need of a part for the single tree from a buggy, and I was wondering if you had any available. Any at all. Seems like such a simple question. Uh, we have those parts. But they're not for sale uh, at this particular time. Oh, all right. Well, you give me some idea of when the particular time will be that they're available? Well, I suspect it all hinges on who's wanting to buy them. <laughs> 
as I mentioned, I'm the one needing them, so I reckon I'll be the one buying them. Well, then they're not for sale. Maybe I'll just purchase some in Macedon today. Maybe they're not so particular about who they take their money from. Thanks for everything. And you Mormons believe in baptism by immersion. Yeah, we do. And we also believe in the laying on of hands. Go get it, go get it. Go, 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 go. go. Pleasure to meet you, neighbor. Thanks for the baptism. Good evening, ma'am. We are ministers, and these ladies are school teachers. We've just been to a ministerial convention. We passed by Mormon Hill, and we thought we would drop in and see this place and hear a bit about Joe Smith. Please, come in. Good evening. Good evening. My husband's in town, but... I would be happy to share with you the story of the Prophet Joseph Smith. This is the home where the Prophet Joseph brought the plates after receiving them from the angel Moroni. He was a liar and a cheat, wasn't he? They came as if they wanted to learn, but in reality, they came to taunt and hurt. I felt darkness invade our home. It was thick, and it had power. I began to pray for help. At that moment, I felt the presence of someone standing beside me. Everyone in the room fell silent. I bear testimony that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. And I feel his presence in this home even now. Anyone who prayerfully seeks will know also. He taught as the Savior did, preaching love and forgiveness.
apologies for our actions, ma'am. I felt the Prophet Joseph's love. And that's what seemed to turn them around. Dear, we're being protected. Pardon me, ma'am. I was told someone in this house is a nurse. Would that be yourself? Lovely. I'll be having a child in a few months, and I'm in need of a nurse to assist me. Go back to Utah where you belong. I know it would be somewhat of a bother. I would take as little of your time as possible, but I know who you are, Mrs. Bean. Nobody here is gonna help you! I did not train in child delivery to help a Mormon! No! I can't tell you how happy it would make me to know that you would come in. Blessings, we thank thee and acknowledge thy hand in our lives. We pray that the way may be opened for us to receive the help that we need with the baby that we are about to bring into this world. These blessings we ask for in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You know, it occurs to me, there is one possibility for a midwife we haven't even considered. Really? Would that be? <sighs> Becca, a man can't be there when the baby's born. You can if there's no one else. You can't do this for me. You've delivered horses and calves before. Sweetheart, you're not a cow. Thank you for noticing, dear. I'm in love with you. Ooh. Hi, neighbor. We're the beans. We just met. Wait, wait. But that. Is this what they've been doing to you? Good morning. We're Willard and Rebecca Bean. Well, that was uncalled for. That was uncalled for. It's Big tough guy. I've been meaning to tell you what a god the church you belong to. There's nothing worse on this earth than an idiot Mormon. And you can just take your and your visions and your glories, or you can just collect yourselves up into a bright red sack and head straight back, back to hell. And while you're there, why don't you make friends with the devil? Because you and him, you're gonna be around each other for a long time.
Brother Beam, please know that the First Presidency and the Twelve pray for you daily. Your mission is in the forefront of our minds. We are desirous of you approaching those who own the Hill Camorra and asking their selling price. Hey, good looking. You one of them Mormons? Through and through. <laughs> have you come to drive me away? Oh, yes, I have. Get in. Where are you taking me? You'll see. Is it all right for us to be here? I just thought it was time that we visit the site that President Smith wants us to purchase. But the current owner may not be so pleased about us being here. Oh, what do they care? They got better things to do than worry about two strangers. Hey! Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? See, they don't mind. They already sent their welcoming committee. You those Mormons moved into the old Smith place? We are. We just wanted to walk to the top of the hill, if that's all right. It ain't all right. It ain't even close to all right. And there ain't no Mormon gonna set foot on this hill again. Never. Now you climb back in that ratty buggy of yours and get on out of here before I do some real damage to you. All right. All right, we'll be on our way. But first, I want to thank you for your warm welcome to your friendly village. We had uh, heard it was going to be really difficult for us here, but well, you've renewed our hope and faith in humanity, so. We're Willard and Rebecca Bean. Happy to be your new neighbors. Never. All right, Rebecca, we should go. We should dilly dally all day here with the good company of this gentleman. Oh, neighbor, I think I caught your name. Never! You think never is his first name or last name? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> you these Mormons. How do you do it? How can you remain so positive when everyone despises us? <laughs> Practice? When you serve a mission in the South in the 1890s, you get plenty of practice. Were they mean to you? Not so much mean to me as they were to the elders we replaced when we got there. What did they do to them? Killed them. Killed them dead? What did they do to you? Let me put it this way. You boys say you got the true religion? Well, you better show us a sign, or we're gonna show you the sign of some real nice southern hospitality. <laughs> right? All right. Yeah. All right, all right. I will be more than happy to oblige you with a sign. First, my companion, he hasn't been out here very long, right? He's not used to this sort of thing. So, would it be okay if we send him down the road a bit, then I'll be happy to show you boys a sign. Yeah. Okay. What do you yeah. say? Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Lieutenant, you go ahead and make your way down the road. I'll, I'll be right after you. I'll be right behind you. All right. So, it's very evident to me that you are very well versed in the Bible and the scriptures because you know that the Lord has shown 
many signs. The sign I'm going to show you is what's well, a heavenly sign. And it's a sign that's been passed down from time gone by. I am going to strike you blind. I did. You did it. I did. <laughs> I told my mission president, Jay Golden Campbell, I said, I will turn the other cheek if they can hit the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. That's what we gotta do, sweetheart. We just gotta keep swinging. Just, just keep swinging. True story. understand that you have been trying to find someone to help with the delivery of your baby. That's right. I am not a trained nurse, but I have done some attending, and I would be happy to assist. You know who we are, correct? I know you're good people. My brother was curious about the Mormons, and so he went to Utah to see for himself. He enjoyed it so much, he moved there. And so here I am, happy as a lark to help in any way. Thank you so much. Uh, the baby's due any day now, and we have a room upstairs for you to stay in. I'll just go back home and pack my things and be back this afternoon. And don't worry, Mrs. Bean. Everything is going to be just fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. She's gonna help me, sweetheart. She's gonna help me. So does this mean I don't get to be in with you when you have the baby? No, Willard. She's going to help me. That is wonderful news. Wonderful. are the father of a beautiful, healthy baby girl. I am? Yes, sir. And I think it's about time you two decided on a name for her. Oh, we know her name. Her name's Palmyra. See you cuties back here in an hour. All right, dear. Come on, Palmyra. Let's go buy some girl things. All right, ladies, have fun. I'll see you later. Hello, puppy. Hello, little puppy. Don't you dare touch my dog. Don't you ever touch my dog again. I'd advise you to keep control of your child, madam. No Mormon is ever allowed to touch any dog in Palmyra. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. She's not very happy, is she? 
We have a lot more animals than she does. We'll let her pet our animals if she ever comes to our place. Maybe that'll make her happy. So, Mr. Sexton, what would you consider a fair price for the hill now? I'd love to sell you the hill, but it has to be on my terms. Of course. And what would that be? Same as before, $100,000. 100000 That is still too much for my church to handle. We can do thirty-five. <laughs> I understand. You know I don't own the entire hill. James Walsh has that smaller farm on the west side. Have you met with him? Yes, we have. We call him Never. Haven't heard him called that before. Well, that's the way he introduced himself to me from the back end of a shotgun. Between he and me, Mr. Bean, it looks like you've got your work cut out for you. Yeah, I suppose I do. But what happened to make you so late? Get lost? I met with Mr. Sexton, and then I had to go all the way to Macedon to get the part I needed. You mean they ran out of parts in Palmyra again? No, they ran out of manners again. Is there something going on at the hill tonight? Have you ever seen that before? Nope. Nope. Yeah, they're digging up the hill. They're looking for gold. They dig even though they don't believe. They believe in gold. It looks pretty. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Rebecca Bean, in this... Yes, we've um, been expecting you. And your name is? Palmyra. Don't worry. You'll make friends soon. This will be fine. Take your seats, please. Thank you. We have a new student in our class this year. Her name is Palmyra. <laughs> and my name's Chicago. <laughs> Take your seat, please, too. Now, class, there is much to cover this year. You first graders are going to have to work very hard to keep up. It won't be easy, but it will be well worth the effort. Every day, I will expect you to come back with your homework prepared, all your T's crossed, all your I's dotted. And always, of course, it's very important you stay in your assigned seats 
and that you follow our class rules. Now, who can tell me what is the newest state in the United States of America? Who knows? Who knows? June. Uh, Opalona. <laughs> no. Elden? Um... No, that's not it. <laughs> Columbia. Arizona. Very good, Columbia. Now, Arizona became the 48th state of the United States of America on Valentine's Day. Ma'am, looks like you could use a little help. Ma'am. Thank you. My husband's away working hard himself, and having enough wood for the kitchen can sometimes get left behind. Well, I've never been afraid of hard work. I also know a little something about being hated. Even before people get a chance to know you. I have a piece of fresh baked pie right there in the kitchen. I'll be right back with a proper thank you. You're good people. You're so kind to give your help. I don't mind the work I have to do, but firewood is harder for me than most kinds of chores. Now you just hold for a bit while you... begin this morning by reviewing our multiplication tables. One times seven is? Seven. Two times seven is? Fourteen. Three times seven is? Twenty-one. Four times seven is? Five times seven is? Thirty-five. Six times seven is? Forty-two. Seven times seven is? Forty-nine. Eight times seven is? Mr. Bean? I'm Elder Crawford Gates, and this is Elder David Adams, and Elder Bob Bittner, and Elder Gordon Hinckley. We've just finished our missions and are on our way home. Would it be possible to spend the evening here before we catch our train tomorrow in Rochester? Certainly, Elders. You're welcome to stay. Why don't you leave your suitcases, and I can have our daughter take you out to the Sacred Grove. 
while I make your rooms ready. Palmyra, we have elders to take care of. Hello, elders. This is the sacred grove. Lots of these trees were here then, but they're older now. We don't know right where he prayed, but somewhere close by. So Heavenly Father and Jesus were here too, and talked to him, and told him what he should do. I think it was a good thing that Joseph Smith prayed here. Don't you? Yes. It was a very good thing. Thank you for the tour, Palmyra. You did such a wonderful job. I would like to give you this. Yeah, a whole nickel. Thank you, but can I have a dime instead? A nickel isn't enough? Well, I don't know how to pay my tithing with a nickel, but I can with a dime. Try this. Sister Bean, did you know you're famous? The word's out in all the missions. Don't go home until you've had a meal from Sister Bean at the Smith Farm. This is the best food I've had since leaving home. There must be so many who come here. How do you do it? Elders, I have something to share with you regarding your question. There was a hot summer day, and we had had a lot of visitors. We just had Alvin, and I had to carry him most of the day just to get my work done. The Apostle Elder Talmadge was here, and we'd had a wonderful evening, but I was so exhausted, I was in tears, and I still had much to be done. Everyone was in bed and asleep, but me. Finally, I got ready for bed. I was crying about my hardships when this dream or vision came to me. There was a knock at the door, and a very handsome young man was standing there. I just knew he was another missionary that had come to see us. He and Elder Talmadge seemed so happy to see each other and talked about wonderful things while they were eating. The spirit was so peaceful and they seemed so happy to be together. After the meal, I put Alvin to bed and went and talked alone with the young man. He told me how sweet and well-behaved my children were and I was so happy about that. He walked into the hall. And as I went to wish him goodbye, it was the Savior that stood before me in all his glory. I couldn't tell you the love and the sweetness that he had in his face. 
he said, Sister Bean, if you go about your work every day, as you have done this day, you will be equal to it. Remember these missionaries represent me on this earth. And all that you've given to them, you've given to me. Elders, you ask me how I can do it day after day and year after year. How can I not do it? I know who you are and all that I do for you. I do for him. Everything all right, dear? In town, I heard Mr. Sexton died. Oh, no. Yeah. With him gone, I don't know if we'll ever be able to obtain all of Kimura. His heirs, they hate the church. Pledge they never sell at any price. Maybe it's time to stand aside and let the Lord take it from here. Palmyra? Is that you? Honey, what happened? Nobody likes me. Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. Why can't somebody just be nice to me? Oh, my little angel. I'm so sorry we've done this to you. I don't have any friends either. I just have Daddy, and I have Alvin, and I have you. But I don't have anybody to play with. Oh, sweetie. These are good people. We just have to give them time to know that we're good people, too. We just need to keep being nice. I'm sick of being nice. There was another little child that used to live in this house. We didn't have any friends either. Do you know who I mean? Joseph Smith? That's right. And he just kept trying and trying. Yeah, and then they killed him. That's right. But not you.
Willer? Willard, did you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've been here six years and they still hate us. I'm trying to do everything that's right and I think I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's time to do what you do best. Irritate you? Put out a challenge. Right. Just challenge the entire town to join the church? No. To get in the ring with you. Really? Really? Maybe we'd make some friends. Sweetheart, one thing I was thinking about with your boxing exhibition. Mm -hmm. You know, you're slightly older now. Mm -hmm. Before you get back in the ring again, you may want to do a little exercising. It's just a thought. Time just has a way of slowing us down. Whatever you think's best. Careful, dear. I'll be careful not to hurt him too badly. I certainly hope this works. We make some friends. All right, well, the show must go on.
right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I am Willard Bean. You know me as the idiot Mormon. But I'm also known as the fighting preacher. The rules of the event tonight are those of the Amateur Boxing Association. Three rounds, winner by knockout, otherwise a draw. All right, let's get this started. Who's our first challenger? How are you good, sir? What's your name? Buster. Buster. Now, Buster, did you come with anybody tonight? All right. Boys, you stay seated till I give you this sign. All right? Got it? Perfect. Ready to get started? All right. Next challenger. Big Hank. Come on, come on. Big Hank. Big Hank. Go. I remember you. Just here for some good old fashioned fun. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, there will be no offense. <laughs> None taken. You know, for me, boxing's a very Christian sport. I give much more than I receive. <laughs> All right, who's next? You look good, man. <laughs> Challengers. Anyone else? Anyone? Thank you for your attendance. I hope you enjoyed the Fighting Preacher Show. Just because you're a good fighter doesn't make you a good man. No preacher. Well, golly, that was a success.
I don't know what else to do. Maybe we just throw in a towel. Go home. Daddy, maybe you should just be nice. Be nice? That's what mommy always says. Maybe sometimes the best way to fight is with love. I'm gonna have to call the fight. No, no, no. I got it. I got it. I just, I gotta change tactics. Yeah. That'll do it. I'm fine. Exactly right. My approach to what we're doing back here is just, it needs an adjustment. We're gonna change tactics. We're gonna do it the Savior's way. We will. Thanks for listening. Good talk. Sweetheart, I have an idea. It should be ready. Oh, that is beautiful. Let's put this on to keep it warm. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, and don't get shot. Can't you get it through your thick skull? No Mormons on this hill. Now, unless you made a recent change in your religion, that means you. Silly me. I forgot. Thanks for the reminder. I said never. You like pie? What kind of pie? Apple? Maybe. Again. Still warm. It's all yours. And the missus. Good to see you, neighbor. recognizes your struggles and, and loves you and is there for you. Mrs. Rhodes? Mrs. Rhodes? It's Rebecca Bean. Who? Rebecca Bean from over on Stafford Road. Come in. I'm up Mrs. Rhodes, I'm told you're not doing well. That's so good. I brought you some potato soup. Uh, 
How do I know you? You know, I live at the Smith Farm over on Stafford Road. I love to make soup. My mother used to say, soup heals the body and the soul. around here I can help you with? What are you doing? Mending fences. Come in. Mrs. Webster? Volunteering with the Red Cross. I'd like to help you and your new baby. <coughs> Come in. Hi. I've come to offer a gift of clothing to help you in any way that I can. I hope this will make your baby feel better. You've been here before. Do you remember me, Mrs. Bean? Yes, Mrs. Webster. I'm happy to see you again. I'm happy to see you, too. Mr. Bean, I'm Charles Collins. This is my wife, Maud. We'd like to speak with you. May we come in? Please. Sure. Nice to meet you. Seen nice you around. Through the laying on of hands, the Lord wants you to know that he loves you. Although it seems at times and it's hard to see, he's never far away. I bless you with health and with strength. Your body might respond to those treatments that have been given you, that you might find happiness in the meantime, that all might be well, that you might feel the presence of your Heavenly Father helping you through this. You make the best soups, Mrs. B. Mrs. Rhodes, did you ever have any trouble with your children at school? Just the same as everybody else, I guess. Some of the children giving your girls some problems. And for sure, she can't be mean back to them. We're all going through the same things. It seems to me nothing's as good as treating others the way you'd like to be treated. Golden rule. What are you two up to? Mommy's helping me be nice. Be nice? 
Sweetheart, are they still being mean to you at school? Honey, I will show you a left hook that will teach them a thing or two. Come with me. Come on. Come on. What? Oh, right. Okay, well, you two carry on. So I'm supposed to like you because you give me pies? No. You're supposed to eat the pie. Begin now by practicing our handwriting. Get out your paper and pencils. Your handwriting, children, is of utmost importance. That is why we practice it every single day. People will judge you by your handwriting before they even meet you. So it is absolutely essential that all your T's be crossed correctly, all your I's dotted, all your letters formed with precision, an articulate, absolutely correct form. Otherwise, people may gain an incorrect impression of you before they even have the opportunity to meet you. Here in this class, we form the foundations of character, of your future life. I appreciate your help with that shed. One more gust and I think it'd be gone. Nothing to it, man. You need to know, Willard, we're good folks around here. I know that. I see it every day. With all the bother we've given you. Just the way we've been brought up. It's us trying to do what we think is right. I understand. It's, we're all trying to learn, right? At least we ought to be. I hope you don't mind me asking, Willard. But we all wonder, are you a polygamist? <laughs> no, sir, I'm not. My daddy was. He had three wives and I'm one of 30 of his children. 30 kids? <laughs> Imagine that. Pretty tough getting a turn at the outhouse, huh? <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, polygamy ended years ago. But I will tell you this, my friend. Rebecca's my second wife. You don't say. And my first wife was Gussie. She was a lovely lady. I just, uh, I didn't give her a just do. I was always, Working or boxing or gone. And some man started flattering her and showing her attention and just being there for her. So she left me. I divorced her. And uh, she and the mister got married soon thereafter. Not long after that, I started beating her. Six months into their marriage, she took her life. I should have done better. Hey, Rebecca, hmm. she is wonderful. She is my sweetheart. 
just trying to do better. Last year, President Harding won the election over James Cox by a landslide. And now some people are saying their vote didn't matter and that it never matters. Let's talk about that. Does one vote make a difference? Who has an idea? I do. Go ahead. I think every person's vote matters. And why is that? Because even if everybody else thinks different, and you're just one person, you're still a person, and other people should listen to what you say too. Because you still have feelings. baptisms in 90 something years thank you brother bean oh no thank you thank you thank you oh hey have i told you two about church callings I'm so happy for you no i must have forgot i'll be in the barn Now what I'm supposed to say. Hello? Hello? Not so loud. Just regular. Mr. Bean, this is Mr. Conger. I'm the lawyer handling the estate of Plenty Sexton. Hello? Yes, Mr. Conger. Not every time. Just... I'd like to meet with you about the Mormon Hill property. Would it be possible for you to come down to Mr. Sexton's old office? Certainly. Let me just finish what I was doing. All right, I'm on my way. Good. The last heir who was antagonistic toward the Mormons has passed away, and the remaining heirs are currently in the position of just wanting to get rid of it. Now, I know you have made an agreement with Mr. Welch, on the other portion of the hill, which, frankly, I don't know how you pulled that one off. Well, I can assure you it had more to do with love and kindness than it did with money. Huh. I still don't get that, but in any case, are you still interested? At what price, sir? The price you've always held to. Well, in that case, Mr. Conger, we are very interested. Very good. I'll get the paperwork to you as soon as... Uh... Daddy, I think I heard the mailman. The 
The mailman came, Daddy. Do you need anything? No, thank you, Palmyra. Sister Bean, for 25 years, you and Sister Bean have labored faithfully as missionaries in Palmyra, New York. With appreciation for your loyalty and faithfulness, we now extend to you an honorable release from your assignment. With love and immeasurable gratitude, President Huber J. Grit. family. Rebecca, what's happened to our life? The time passed away, and also our lives passed away, like as it were unto us a dream. When they settled on the Smith farm, some of our citizens, me included, started a tirade with the object of getting rid of them. But when they proved to be good citizens, we learned to tolerate them and admire them and respect them. And now we love them. Willard was at first denied membership into our organization then later on becoming our president. It is with reluctance that we now bid farewell to the kindest family that ever lived in Wayne County. Willard has a way about him. It seems to turn enemies into friends. His fearless demeanor, it just seems to rub off and we all wish that we had what he has. Willard and Rebecca also found time to raise their family, both Palmyra and Elvin, graduating from our high school as valedictorians. The Mormon church may think it knows what it's doing by sending them back, but we don't think so. <laughs> they couldn't have found another man who could have done the things that you have done here. And if we went to the Civic Club today to take a vote as to whom is the most popular man in Palmyra, it most certainly would be Willard Bean.
And they have won a warm spot in our hearts and will forever live in the memory of this generation. Willard and Rebecca, I absolutely hate to see you go. Don't leave. Never. May God bless you and go with you in all that you do.